We're starting a new series today called Today I Choose. Today I Choose. And I'd like to start off our time together just by saying, um, what do you suppose the difference is? What do you suppose the difference is between people who have a truly fulfilled life, like just a great life, and, and people who... Um, don't (laughs) like, like we've noticed people that have a truly, truly fulfilled life. They have great relationships. You know, they have great, they have great financial sense. Their, their, their financial uh, stuff is going really, really well. They have a meaningful ministry. Their love life is doing good. What's the difference between those people and the rest of us? Like, seriously, what is, what are they doing that we're not? What are they doing that we're not? Cause I feel like, I don't know about you, I am like missing the memo sometimes. It's like these people over here, I'm watching them. I'm seeing them. They're doing good. But the rest of us, sometimes we're struggling in our relationships. We're, we're, we're struggling financially. And, and we, we have a tendency to feel empty inside. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Not only today, we're going to talk about that for the rest of the month. It's going to be, um, I hope, groundbreaking for you. I hope truly helpful to you. Um, I want to let you know, too, that, that we have notes available to you. You can follow along with everything that we have that we're about to offer to you in the Version Bible app. So if you want to uh, navigate there right now in your iPhone or your vastly superior Android device, just couldn't help myself there. Again, I like to do that every once in a while. But if you get the, the version Bible app, you can find Lifeline Church there. You can make it your church. You can follow along with all the notes. Or, of course, you can just get the bulletin that was handed to you and take some notes that way. And that's a great way to, to internalize and remember all the things we're going to be talking about today. Today I choose. Today I choose. Um, it's, I hope we're going to be so, so helpful. So the difference between people that have all their stuff together, the difference between people that have all of these good things going on for them, the difference between all these people that, that seem to be doing really, really great and the rest of us, I'll tell you what it's not. I'll tell you what it's not. Like, what is the thing that they don't have? I'll tell you, it's not their intelligence that gets them there. It's not their talent and it's not like their, their uh, appearance. It's not like just they're just so attractive that they just get all this going. I'll, I'll tell you why, and you know the reason too, because I've seen smart people who are miserable. Can I get an amen? <laughs> You're like, I know, they think they're so smart, but they're, they're miserable. But I, I've also seen talented people uh, go broke. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not their talent that gets them there because I've seen talented people go broke and I've seen attractive people who just can't hold on to a relationship. And some of you know, because you dated that person. Ooh, it's too soon, too soon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's too soon. You're like, man, I just broke up with them. I'm not over it yet. Well, I mean, I, it's true. Like the most attractive people in the whole world, like they can't, they can't hang on to a marriage or they can't hang on to a relationship. What's the deal with that? So it's obviously not their talent. It's not their intelligence and it's not their looks that gets them. What's the difference? What's the difference between people that have it all, people that are, are doing well, feel fulfilled and satisfied and everything's going good, everything's going right. What's the difference between them and us? I'll, I'll tell you what it, what it all boils down to and what we're gonna be talking about the rest of this month. It boils down to choices, the choices that they make. So incredibly important. The quality of your choices determine the quality of your life, period. You don't have to be the most intelligent. Thank God. <laughs> you don't have to be the most attractive. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. It's, it's the quality of your choices that makes all the difference. It's the quality of the choices that you make. And that's, that's the very problem we face. We're not good choice makers. We're not good decision makers. I'm so sorry. Like, am I the only one? We struggle with this. We do. We eat more than we should on a regular basis. We buy things we can't afford on a regular basis. We say things we regret. We do things we don't mean to or we don't want to, and we hurt the people we love the most. Why? Why do we do this? Why do we let this happen? It's because we're not great decision makers. It's because in the moment, we make the wrong choice when it matters the most. We make the wrong choice. Uh, now, I, uh, I'll just out myself first because I feel like you're, you're feeling a little guilty right now. Don't feel guilty. I'm, I struggle with this as much as anybody else. So let me just describe how I am a terrible decision maker. <laughs> well, you want to hear a story about how I'm a bad decision? You want to know, you want to know how I, I discovered I was a bad decision maker? I got some really good ones. I got some really great stories. I had to go through like, the files of like, how many bad stories could I tell them? You know, you know what, you got to pass with the past and all that, but I thought I'd keep it light. 
today. I'm not going to go to like the deep archives of, of my terrible decisions. I'm going to keep it kind of light. It's the first Sunday of the, of the year. Let's keep it. Let's keep it mild. So I'm going to talk about um, when I discovered I had, I had really bad decision-making abilities with my eating. With my eating, it was the it was the pandemic time. It was COVID time, and and everybody's home. I'm at home too, and I'm just like kind of waiting around. And, and that's when I discovered I have very little control over myself, <laughs> and I'm very bad decision maker when it comes. Because I here's the decisions I was making. Here's kind of like my train of thought. I'm like, hey, my family's stuck at home. I know what I'll do. I'll go get a dozen donuts. Mm, let's <laughs> let's get this party started. Okay, so it's first thing in the morning. I'm gonna go get a dozen donuts. I'm a good dad. All of a sudden, I'm gonna I'm a good husband. I'm gonna bring home a dozen donuts. It's gonna be great. And so that just kind of like that just opens the doors for a guy like me. Like that's just getting things going. So and then that's not real breakfast, right? So you gotta have donuts. But then but then you gotta make eggs, bacon, sausage. <clears throat> Pancakes and waffles, can I get an amen? Let's go, let's go. And so breakfast is over. I've already had like 2,500 calories. We're good, we're good, right? No, because lunch is right around the corner. And you know what? I don't wanna, I don't wanna see Tiffany have to make anything. Let's just order a pizza. <laughs> okay, things went downhill really, really quick. And, and I'll, I'll describe you really quickly how my decision-making abilities, they got, I'll describe my poor decision-making abilities in two words, muffin top, muffin top. That's how I would describe my poor decision-making ability, muffin top, because that's just, that's just how it ended up. I, I, I gained like 35 pounds. I discovered, and that was, that's one mild story of how I know I have a, ten- and if I have a tendency, I'm a pretty average person. I'm just not. I don't know, out myself here, but I'm, I'm an average guy, normal person. I know I'm up here with a microphone, but I'm, I'm just like anybody else. And I, decisions can be tough. Choices in the moment can be tough. And I can, I can spin out pretty easily just on some regular stuff. Like what do I choose? And here's, here's the problem. I, I, I discovered that there's about, well, there's way more, but there's three that I want to talk to you about today. There's three reasons why our choices are so tough day in, day out. Why do we struggle to make good choices? That's the question. Why do we struggle? Number one is this. This is the first reason I want to talk about is, is we're overwhelmed with choices. This is in your notes. This is in your bulletin. You can write this in. You'd be like, I already knew that, but I'll write it down anyways. I get it. We're overwhelmed with choices. In that little video, we call it a bumper video. That little, that little video that, that played before it said, we face hundreds of of decisions. Well, we need to edit that video because any quick Google search, your scientific side of you that knows how to Google things will tell you that the average person will make upwards of 35,000 decisions every single day. 35,000 choices. We are underwater in the amount of choices we need to make. It's ridiculous. It's nonstop. And it starts as soon as you wake up. Am I going to hit snooze? Am I not going to hit snooze? Am I going to wear my black shoes? Am I going to wear my brown shoes? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What am I going to say? What show am I going to binge watch? What am I going to do? Like, it's just all day long from the minute we open our eyes, you don't even realize how many decisions you have to make. And um, cognitive scientists will call this decision fatigue. Decision fatigue. Um, as volume of decisions increase, as your choice, as the volume you make increases, the quality of those choices will decrease. So the more, and you understand this, like I'm, I know I'm, I'm kind of making sense already. The more choices throughout the day you have to make, at the end of the day, and you spent. That's this is why this is why you can go to work. And for those of you who are professionals, you're at work and you're making, you're making acquisitions, you're making business deals, you're negotiating, you can make good decisions for all day, for eight hours. And you know who to hire, who to fire, what's going on. And then you get home and you're just like, you know what, give me the whole kitchen. And you have no, you don't, cause you don't want to choose anymore. You don't want to make any more decisions. You're just spent. You're just wiped out. Come on. Wave at me if you ever felt that way before. It's like, you just had a long day. I don't, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing all this anymore. I'm like, I'm, it's called decision fatigue. And that's why you can, you can make great choices all day, but then come home and, and make, a, make a mistake and make a poor choice. Come home and binge eat. How about for like two weeks, you can just restrain yourself with financial choices. And you're like, no, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to buy that. And then it's like wearing on, uh, not going to buy that. I'm not going to buy that. And then bam, impulse buy. And now you're in debt. <laughs> Whoops. 
that happened fast. I mean, I know some of y'all's Amazon cart has got like $13,000 in it. I know this. I know this. I've seen it. I've seen it like you showed me. That's, no, no, that's number one is that we've just got so many choices that we get fatigued by it and it, it just, it wears us down. It wears us down. So the number two reason is this. The number two reason goes like this. We're afraid of making the wrong choice. We're afraid of making the wrong choice. And, and if you're a Christian, this is especially challenging. Um, for, the, for those of you who are Christians in the room, I mean, maybe you're exploring your faith. I'm so happy you're here because that's what we kind of live for is we want to introduce you to faith and have you grow in that. But if you're already a Christian, you're already a believer, I know that you, you might already struggle with this. Why? Because you don't want to miss God's will. <laughs> right. You don't want to miss God. Oh, I don't know if I should go to that school because I, is it the perfect school? Is it the right school for me? Oh, oh, I don't know about this job. Is it the perfect job? Is it the right job? Is it God's will job? And so like we get like we're, we're afraid of just choosing. So we get afraid of it. And Christians deal with this a lot. How about like, oh, is it the right house? I'm going to put an offer on this house or that house. Or should I stay in this house? Or should I run over here? It's, 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 it's like this fear. We're afraid of making the wrong choice. And since we aren't sure... We don't make any decision at all. But you know, um, this band called Rush told me that indecision is a decision. And every single, single like weird rock and roll person from the past just chuckled at that. And now I know you. Now I see you. I get it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I see you. All right. That was a very inside joke, but it's all good. It's all good. Indecision is a choice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And, and I would tell any kind of leader any person that, is a, that has influence in the workplace or in a family or somebody who's trying to develop their leadership, indecision is the enemy of progress. You, you can't stay there. It's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to want to grow and progress and, and you know, make the right call. But some, somewhere along the line, you're going to have to choose without having all the facts. So don't be afraid to make the choice. But here's the big one. Here's the number three one I want to talk to you about the most. Um, this number three one is the big one that we're going to kind of drill down on today is we let emotions overrule logic. This happens more often than we might like to admit. So we let emotions overrule logic. It's interesting that some decisions we spend way too much time analyzing. I know this. I'm an overthinker textbook. I, I didn't even know I was until later, but I, it, we just are. And here's, let me just prove it to you. We could spend, we could spend more time researching which series we're going to watch than the, the time we actually spend watching the show. It's like, which one's the right one? And we're like scrolling through. We do this. We're like scrolling through, scrolling through, scrolling through. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Just pick one, man. You don't know what any of them are really like. Just pick one. It's, it's crazy. But we let emotions overrule our logic. And, but here's, that's the interesting thing. We spend so much time analyzing choices that, that don't even matter. <laughs> that's a choice that doesn't even matter. We spend so much time analyzing that. Um, and and I'll, I'll prove this to you too. Like, I just, I'm outing myself a lot today. But recently I had to, um, had to. I, was, I wanted to get a new laptop, right? I wanted to change the way I was doing my notes and I wanted it to, to fold over so that I could do it. And I don't even use it anymore, obviously. So that's where that story ends. But I spent weeks I spent weeks researching which one's the right one. What kind of specs does it have? Is it available used? Because I got to get it used because I'm on that pastor budget. So I got to bid on it on eBay, which is a whole nother thing. I don't even want to talk about. I want to forget that eBay exists because of that. Hate it. And as soon as I win it, then it's like, oh, it was a fake thing. And now I don't get it. Oh my, uh, just weeks and weeks and weeks, researching, researching, researching the right thing. And I finally get the right one. And it takes me like seriously over a month to research and to, and to just drill down just to get it. And then I get it. And this is my happy face when I'm typing. I'm typing, I'm going, I'm going to town. And then like every once in a while, space bar doesn't work. Anybody who knows me knows that ain't gonna work for me. That ain't gonna work for me. Like every once in a while, it's just gonna not, it's gonna stick. It went straight back. It went straight back. And I just went to Verizon and be like, do you have anything I just put on my plan? Come on, get me out of here. But we spend so much time analyzing over things that are like, that when, if you look back on your life, maybe you've been there too. Like you spent a long time thinking about something and then you just turned it back in. It's crazy. We spend a long time over analyzing things that don't matter, but then when it comes to really, really, really important decisions, we let emotions make the call. Ooh, that's a problem. That's a big problem. That's a 2024 something needs to change problem 
We, we let emotions overrule logic. We react in the moment. The kids upset you, and, and you know logically that you're supposed to, you know, mm, be patient, be calm. But the emotions cause you to yell. And in the moment, you don't make that right call. Um, in the moment, you're, you're faced with an unexpected temptation. And logic would tell you, man, this is not wise. This is not going to let, my life is not going to play out well if I give in to this temptation. But emotions tell you, oh, you deserve it. The sky's not going to fall. It's not that big a deal. No raised hands, okay? You don't need to, all eyes forward, right? It's okay. We've all been there. It's the emotional choices that hurt us the very most in life. It's those choices, and many of you can look back on some choices that you made in the moment that, that hurt you dearly. And I, I would uh, give you this as a, as a note to take, as a principle to apply. Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions that are gonna affect you for years to come. The quality of your choices determine the quality of your life. So we've got to do better than just letting our emotions call the shots in the moment. One of the best ways, and this is getting kind of to the point now of what I want to really give you today. One of the best ways to live a forward-looking, people-loving, God glorifying life is to choose today what you're going to do later. You can pre-decide. You can choose today. I, this is the choice I'm going to make. This is the way I'm going to go. That when I'm faced with something, this is how I'm going to respond. And I've got some scriptures to kind of um, to tease this out from the scriptures. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it starts it off. It says this, the Lord is speaking to his people. It says, today, today. I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. God says plainly right here, right now, that you can choose today life or death that will impact your future for generations to come. What you choose today is gonna impact you for the future. You can choose now how you're gonna respond later. It's amazing. And when we realize this, and when we begin to apply this in our life, it can change everything. It can change everything. As followers of Jesus, man, it just makes all the difference in the whole world. We have to make choices today that will impact our future for the challenges that we're gonna to face tomorrow. Because I got news for you, when you give your life to Jesus, raise your hand, say the prayer, life doesn't just go away. Life continues to happen. Challenges continue to come. And, you've, and, and if I'm going to equip you at all as your pastor, I want to equip you to be able to make the right choices when those challenges come. It is life and death. I give you the choice. Is what the Lord says. I give you the choice between life and death. Oh, that you would choose life today. Today is powerful. Uh, in Proverbs 2, 11, it says this, wise choices will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. What does that mean? It means understanding that if you can choose now. The wisdom is that you can choose now. That's the understanding that you can choose now to respond how you're going to, how you're going to respond later. I'm going to choose in advance. I'm going to choose today how I'm going to respond later. How, what I, how I act now responds how I'm going to respond later. Proverbs 16, three. Oh, this is a good one. Oh my gosh. Commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. With God's help, we can determine the course of action before the moment of decision. And it looks something like this. I put it on the screens for you so you can kind of get an illustration of, of what it looks like. It looks just like this. Let's put it up there. When I'm faced with this situation, today I choose to take this action. So we can decide in advance how we're going to live. We can decide in advance how I'm going to respond when that situation hits me. And that's the thing. God has given us the ability in our, in our humanity and in our human minds, we, can, we have foresight. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You can look ahead and know, hey, look, I'm going to be faced with a certain temptation. I'm going to be faced with challenges. And when I am faced with those, I'm deciding now, based on my values, how I'm going to respond then. Now, I, as many times as I've rehearsed this, as many times as I've been thinking about this, praying about this, I wanted to let you know, this is not some kind of fail-safe. This isn't some way of saying, oh, you'll never have any problems ever again. If you just do this thing, you write this down right here. No, no, no. It's going to set you up 
for a, uh, um, a systematic way to approach success that will increase the probability of you making that correct decision. I hope that makes sense. It's not, nothing is a fail safe. Not, I cannot give you anything that'll plug and play and automatically make your life totally easy. No problems ever again. So ever, forever, your whole life. No, 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 no. But this will cause you to make better decisions if you will apply these principles. If you will just say to yourself, like when I am, to, when I am faced with um, an impulse purchase, for example, impulse purchase, it's caused me problems in the past and I'll probably face that again. Amazon cart. We already talked about that. Like when I'm faced with that, I'm going to choose now that when I face that, I'm going to wait three days before I make any purchase over a hundred dollars or a hundred feet, like whatever. Like you can come up with it yourself. I'm not running your life for you. I'm giving you a tool that you can plug into your life and actually choose to, to say, you know what, when I am tempted with that impulse purchase, I'm going to wait X amount of days. Or how about this one? I know I'm going to get worried. I know I'm going to get stressed. I know I'm going to get anxious. It's going to happen because I live in the world. It will happen. But I'm choosing now that when I face stress, when I face temptation, when I face anxiety, I'm going to choose to stop right then and there. Whenever I feel the sensation, I'm going to choose to pray right there in the moment. Like, it's amazing how much more often you will do that if you decide in advance you will do that. I hope this is helping, that you can choose today life or death. And if you choose not to decide, that's a choice too. But I'm just going to wait and see how I feel. I'll tell you how you're going to feel. Tempted. <laughs> you're going to feel anxious, worried, stressed, tempted to do the wrong thing. But in your, in your foresight, you can foresee those things that are definitely going to happen and decide in advance based on your values what's going to happen. How's this one? Like when I'm faced with this situation of somebody cuts me off in traffic, I'm deciding now, I'm choosing today to pray that they will go to heaven instead of telling them, fill in the blank. All right. It was just like, it's your blank, not mine. You know, I would probably tell them to have a nice day. I don't know about you, but whatever. God's people throughout the word have been doing this. God's people throughout the word have been doing this all the way back in Genesis chapter 22. This man, Abraham, uh, who God told him to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Luckily for him, luckily for all of us, Abraham back in chapter 15 got into a covenant with God and said, whatever you say, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to choose to follow you. So when the day of testing came, he made the right choice. Spoiler alert, Isaac lived, everybody. It's very good. <laughs> it's good news for everybody. Is that tests sometimes come, but it's always to, to, to build us up and to bring us into where we're going. I hope you pass that test and you will pass that test if you decide in advance to serve and love God. How about this one in, uh, in Ruth? In Ruth chapter one, the story of uh, Ruth um, following Naomi or Naomi, I'm not sure how to pronounce it anymore. Uh, like I said, not the most intelligent person in the room. Naomi, let's go with Naomi as a mother-in-law, is Ruth's mother-in-law and her husband dies, Ruth's husband dies and she's like stuck, doesn't know where to go. And she looks at her mother-in-law, Naomi and says, where you go, I go. Some of you got the plaque over your fireplace. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. We, we've all heard it from Chris Tomlin. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. Your people will be my people, the whole, the whole bit, right? That was all before Prince Charming came along. Boaz is his name. Come on. Some of you ladies waiting for Boaz right now. And he might be in the room. Maybe he's in second service. So I'm just saying. Ugh. Move on. <laughs> uh, she decided in advance. Naomi decided, no, Ruth decided in advance, I'm going to follow Naomi. And she didn't know how it was going to turn out, but she decided in advance and things turned out very, very well for her to choose to honor God. She didn't have to go back to her people where they didn't honor God. She chose to honor God. How about this one? Daniel chapter one. My favorite one. This is where we're going to stay a little bit. Daniel chapter one is where Israel is conquered by um, the Babylonians and, and they're, they're taken away to a foreign land to be brainwashed and to live this other way. But Daniel, this man, Daniel chose ahead of time not to let that be him. And this is uh, Daniel chapter one, verse eight goes like this. But Daniel resolved, he resolved to not defile himself with the royal food and wine. What's that saying? He didn't wait till he was in the kitchen to decide if he was hungry for chocolate cake or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, what you got there? A prime rib? Hmm, I guess I'm not hungry. No, he just, he resolved. He said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. 
I value God. I value our ways. I value the way that we, our customs and the things that we're going to do. So he resolved in advance, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do that. That, I believe, is, the, is one of the major reasons why he was so successful and why he was considered so wise from the word of God anyway. He's one of the most wisest people brought, brought him over. He, he didn't wait until the moment of temptation to make the choice. He decided in advance. He chose today because he, he knew what he valued. Because he knew what he valued. So he chose that day. What do you value? I'm asking you. What, 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 do you, what do you value? What do you want to be known for? What do you want your life to reflect? What do you want people to see? Like, what do you want to be known for? How do you want to be remembered on your deathbed? Like, what do, what do people know about you? What do they know from you? You want to be known for your, for your integrity and how honest you were. You could have got ahead in life and now that people know that how integrous you were. What about faithfulness? Faithfulness to your family and you know, your, your spouse and your kids and being there. You want to be known as a person who was faithful, a person who was there for your family, a person who even when challenges hit, you, you hung in there, you stayed, you stayed put, you stayed firm, you stayed strong for the sake of your kids, for the sake of your marriage and toughed it through. And I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I know some of you have been through some tragic things, been through some hard things, and maybe that ship has sailed. But in the future, you can say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to resolve myself. Today, I choose that I want to be known for that faithfulness. You want to be known for purity. You want to be known for your purity in a world of filth. <laughs> like, this world is crazy. You can't even drive down the street without some smut yelling at you. It's wild out there. I mean, it's just the world we live in now. It didn't used to be that way when I was a kid. It was bad still, but it wasn't like it is now. It's crazy. In a world of lust and filth, you want to be known. I value my purity. That's what I want to be known for that. That's what I value. What about generosity? In, in a world where people are out for themselves, and it's like, you see all these graphs of the richest people in the world. You're trying to get ahead. Go, but no, I want to be known for my generosity. I, I want to get ahead. I want to be, uh, I want to be wise. I want to, I want to have wisdom and I want to see growth, but I want to be known for how generous I am with that. God so loved the world that he gave. What do you value? What do you value? Let's choose to value God today by choosing to, to ramp up the spiritual activity in our lives through prayer and choose to and limit the secular in our lives through fasting. I know some of you knew this, but we're actually starting a season of prayer and fasting together. And, and I would say that if, you don't, if you're not sure which direction to go, this would be a wonderful way to start your new year, is to start your new year off right, to start your new life off right by choosing to elevate your spiritual life and, and quiet the things of this world and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quiet those things. So with fasting, with fasting, I'm asking every person in this church to do two things this very first Sunday of 2024. I got to get used to saying that still. The, the first thing is this. I wanna, I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm, I, I don't know some of you are already, you, some of you are already good at praying. Some of you maybe not so much. You're not used to it. But I'm asking you to begin to, to, to fall in with this rhythm of, of going deeper in prayer. I want you to pray every single day. I want you to choose a place in your, in your car, maybe, in your bedroom, maybe. Maybe you have a spot in your house that you can kind of get away to to actually, actually spend time talking with God. And on top of that, we're actually opening our doors here at the church. We've been doing this on Saturday mornings for a while, but we're gonna actually double our opportunities for you to be a part of this. We have a prayer service. It's like a, right now it's about a dozen of us that just kind of get together on Saturday mornings from nine to 10. And that's gonna keep going. I'm inviting every single one of you to be a part of that. It's a prayer service. I'll describe it to you in just a second, but there's also going to be Thursdays. So if, if the morning doesn't work for you, the weekend doesn't work for you, we'll have Thursdays from 5.30 to 6.30 right here, right here. And just for the next 21 days, say, you know what? I'm going to come to either one that works for me or even both because they're going to be different every time. And these, these, these prayer services are one hour long, not a minute over 60 minutes. All right. We, we keep it very you know, for your schedule, like we keep it right on track. And what we do is we, we open up with some music, you know, to kind of get the ball rolling. It kind of helps us. And then there's a devotional on prayer that's either going to teach you 
something you didn't know about praying to equip you to pray, or it's going to inspire you to pray. And then we'll, we'll, we turn the lights down low. We turn the music up high. Nobody's looking at you. And then there's some open time to just spend time in God's house praying. And then we close it all off together by coming together and praying over some specific things. And that's led. And you can just agree with us in prayer together. And we're praying over the schools. We're praying over our government. We're praying over our leaders. We're praying over this church. And we pray over some things. And it's not a minute over 60 minutes. So I would encourage you and invite, I'm inviting every single one of you, come be a part of that for 21 days. Some of my friends are doing five days a week, six in the morning. And I was like, nah, nah, like we, we cool, we cool on all that. We're going to do, we're going to do Thursday nights and we're going to do Saturday mornings, but I'm inviting you to be a part of it. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. That's the thing. Number one, thing number two, I'd love for you to, in, in, to be fasting. I'd love for you to fast something. And I'll try to briefly explain what that is. If you haven't been taught about fasting, like, what is that? What does that mean? Does that mean I have to give up food for 21 days? Not exactly. Not exactly. I, I do have some friends of mine, some pastor friends of mine. He recently went 40 days without food. Oh my gosh. And he didn't die. Can you believe it? I don't believe it. I am. I was stunned. Stunned. Absolutely. So, so no, I'm not asking everybody to do that, but that is a normal fast to, to give up food. I actually gave up food for, for 48 hours this last week to kind of, cause I, you know, I, I like to do things first. I kind of like to lead the way and I don't like to ask people to do things that I'm not willing to do myself. So every year I will do, go at least 24 hours, no food. This year I went uh, 48 hours and some years, one year I went seven days. <laughs> That'll probably be the last year that I did that. It was crazy. But that would be called a complete fast to, to just give up, just water only, water and coffee, hallelujah. Um, just no calories, you know. Um, but there's a couple other ones that I'd love for you to consider if that's not, like you gotta, cons- you gotta check with your doctor. I'm not trying to send anybody to the hospital. You know, I, I don't want any litigation up in here, all right? So check with your doctor. There it is right there. But there's also the selective fast which is when you start selecting which foods you're going to eat. Daniel did that. He said, I'm not going to eat um, any meats, sweets, dairy, or bread. And so I'm not going to eat all this luxurious food. I'm just going to eat vegetables. So that's something you do. Maybe no sugar, no carbs, no bread, whatever. Like you can choose something. If that's your speed, if that's where you're at, do that. That's okay. Like we're, we're all about taking steps towards that direction. And then there's uh, something called a partial fast where you would part of the day, uh, give up food. Tiffany did this before she went to Spain. Um, she gave up lunch and instead of eating her lunch, she prayed. And then she went to Spain to be a missionary for six months. Can you believe she did that? I like to bring it up because people don't know how awesome she really is. She really is awesome. Um, but that would be a partial fast. Um, so I would love for us to all consider something we can do that way because it really connects us to God. It, it's a way of us saying no to our flesh saying no to her by saying, you know what? Maybe you don't need as much as you are screaming at me that I need. You need candy. You really don't. You know, but our bodies do scream at us, right? And it's like, we can't hear anything. And if, if food is not on track, or maybe you want to do like a little something with food, but want to add to it, I would also encourage every person who's listening to the sound of my voice to also consider a soul fast. This is a little different. I was taught this early on in my faith, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. A soul fast is giving up something not for your stomach, not from your stomach and your actual flesh, but giving up something from your mind, like social media, like YouTube, like the internet, like maybe like just just regular news. Like some of y'all just need to give up the news, like the secular news for 21 days. Man, if something happens politically, you'll just find out later, okay? Amen, right now, I already blessed you. I already helped you right there. Just get out of there. I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna do a little something with food and I'm gonna do a little something for my soul and I'm also gonna be at prayer. I'm, in, I'm inviting all of you to be there because when your values are clear, when you know you value God, when you know you want to value him, when you know you want to be closer to him, your decisions get easier when you get closer to him like this. I would encourage you, everybody, to choose today what you're going to do later, how you want your life to turn out. So here's another way to write this blank, like the, this, this slide right here. Let's put it back up. When faced with blank, this situation, boom, the, the situation is it's a new year. Let's just write that in right now in our minds. Or like the situation is it's a new year. And when I face a new year, today I choose that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put God first every year by prayer and fasting. We do this every single year. We've been doing this for like 
six years. I don't even know. I forgot to look, but it's been like five or six years. We've never missed a year. And you can decide to make this a part of the rhythm of your life just to say, you know what? I'm putting God first. How is this going to play out in your life? I'll tell you how. Many people don't realize that our choices are rarely isolated. Rarely, as like every choice we make impacts so many other things in our lives. They impact, our choices impact a lot of things. Our decisions determine our direction and our direction determines obviously your outcome, your destiny, your, your, where you end up. So your choices matter. They all matter so much. Your life, if your life is moving in the direction of all of your choices, do you like the direction that your life is headed right now? Or, or, or could you put more of God in your life? Could you get closer to the heart of God? And if that's something you want, I'm, I'm inviting you. Let's take back our lives right now. Let's, I'm inviting you. Take back your life. Say, you know what? I'm taking back my life for the Lord. I'm going to choose today to do something different. One thing you can do today to just say, you know what? I'm going all in for God. This is a new year. This is a new me. This I'm going all in and I'm trying to jump is our growth track. Obviously. Well, it's not obvious. I'm, excuse me. I just say it so often that I forget that there's newer people here and they haven't heard me talk about it. So if you have heard me talk about it, pretend like it's the first time you're hearing it. Our growth track is today. It's after second service and there's no better way to say, you know what? I'm jumping in. I'm, this is not just a church I attend. This is my church. This is my church, where I want to belong. It's the on-ramp for making this place your home. And as a pastor, this might sound funny to hear, but you can come to church for a long time and never really get much out of it. This is, that's weird for a pastor to say. I realize that. I realize that, but it happens. I say it because it happens all the time. It happens all the time. You come to hear the preaching. You come to hear the music. You come to get kind of taken care of, and there is a season for that. There's a season that you just need to be taken care of. But once you say, this is my home, this is where I'm going to serve, this is where I'm going to give, this is where I'm going to be a lifeline to others, this is where you you move from, from coming for what you can get to coming for what you can give, church gets really good and exciting. Things change. I'm just telling you, things change when it, when it goes from, oh man, that's my favorite playlist. But when you come and you become part of the team and you start to serve a little bit, it's like you get to take credit For every hand that gets raised for the Lord, you're like, I shook their hand walking in here. I waved at them right when they got out of their car. I watched their kids while they were in there hearing the message of the gospel. Once you like begin to like feel that, and this is my, that's your favorite Sunday. Not when it was your favorite playlist, not when it was your favorite songs, not when it was your, not when the pastor was the funniest. It's that, that stuff kind of goes to the wayside. I'm just telling you there's a next level. There's a next level that when you make this church your church, when you make a church, we like this church. We're inviting you to be a part of this church. There's a lot of good ones out there. But when you make the church your church and you begin to to join in arms with that place, it just takes your your soul to the next level. And that's how God designed us. Church gets really good and really exciting. The first Sunday of 2024, I'm inviting you. Let's go all in. Let's go all in together. Let's, let's, let's give God one year of our lives and just see what he can do. You think he can do something good? You think he can do something good with your life in 2024? Do you think there's something that, that might go a little bit better this year than when last year? If you decided to go all in with him, I know that would be the case. I know it would be the case. And this is what I know about you and me. And this is, this is kind of the ugly truth. I know this about us. We're normal people. We're regular salt of the earth people. But you and me, we're, we're inconsistent We have a tendency to be inconsistent. We have a tendency to be unprepared, unintentional, selfish, short-sighted. We quit when things get tough. Like that's our natural state. Sorry to say, I know it because it's me. I know it because it's me. But today I choose that my decisions won't be based on my emotions and how I feel that day, but on the values that God placed in my heart. Because my values are higher than my emotions. My values are higher than how I feel today. My values are higher than what outcome I'm seeing in life because I know God has better for me. I know God has more for me. So I'm gonna choose today to honor God, to be there for him, to do what he calls me to do, to let him call me out of this grave I'm in because how I'm feeling does not determine my outcome. No, I'm gonna choose today to honor and value God. Amen, somebody.
This is it. This is, I mean, this is where life comes alive. And I'm bringing a message like this on a day like this because I know you might be thinking about it because I know it's the new year. I know many of us are thinking, man, what, what's, what's gonna be different this time? And I know, but I wanna remind you that just taking it back personally, I know I'm gonna get tired tomorrow. I'm gonna be tired next week. I'm gonna get overwhelmed. I'm gonna get angry. I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna get discouraged. I'll be depressed, but my values are clear. And today I'm choosing because of the wonderful foresight God has given me, today I'm gonna choose to value God when those moments hit. And when I'm feeling low, when I'm feeling down and when my emotions will wanna drag me down to make a different decision that doesn't value God, I know I really do and I want to. So I'm gonna make my choices. I'm gonna choose today. I'm gonna choose today to bless him. But here's the best news of all. You're not saved by your good choices. You're saved by the grace of God. (laughs) Can't leave you without telling you that. It's so important because I want you to make good choices. I I, I want your life to be better. I, I want you to feel better about your life. I want you to walk around with your head held high, confident, knowing that you're, you're serving the Lord. But I don't want you to think that's how you're saved. I don't want you to think that that's how, that's how you get to heaven. No, no, you're saved because of his grace, which is unearned. All you have to do is come to him humbly. We're saved by the grace of God. Jesus chose beforehand that he was gonna go to the cross. And when he was faced with that moment, He was so stressed out. The Bible says that he was sweating blood. He was so worried and so stressed and so afraid and so scared. And he knew the pain. The Bible says he knew the pain that was coming. He knew. He knew the pain, the shame too. It also talks about the shame. A lot of people talk about the pain. People don't talk about the shame that he endured. There's a song that says, on a hill you created, you gave your life. Think about that. He created He created this whole way. He died on a hill. He created people. He created, killed him. That's shameful. It's shameful. But before he came to that moment, he had decided in advance, I'm going to that cross. And he went to that cross for you, for me, for every single one of us that would just receive him. That's what I want to give to you today. That's what I want to bless you with today. I'd love for you to do all the other things we talked about, prayer, fasting. It's great. Growth track please, you're going to love it. But if you, if, if you need just the saving grace of the Lord, I want to invite you to receive that most of all. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. I want to pray over two groups of people as I always do. There's two groups of people that are always on my mind, always on my heart. Uh, the first is the, the people that used to have a relationship with him but have somehow drifted away, somehow something happened, something jarred you loose, something jarred you free of of being connected with the Lord and you know you're not where you should be with him. But I wanna tell you, there's no guilt, there's no shame. And just like the prodigal who was kind of out doing his own thing for a while, when he came home, the father came running to him and was only so glad and so blessed that his child came home. If that's you today, I'm gonna give you a moment, uh, in just a moment to to come back and say, you know what, father, I wanna come home to you. And the other group of people is people that have never really made that decision. Maybe you've like been around, you got praying family, but it just was never you. You've never done this yourself. And I wanna tell you that there is going to be a celebration in heaven if you would just make that smallest indication in a moment when I ask you to lift your hand that, that the angels are celebrating you. Not only are we celebrating you mildly, but they're celebrating you eternally. God loves you more than I or we ever will as human beings. We just cannot fathom the kind of love God has for us. And so I want you to receive that love today, no matter where you stand on that side of things. If that's you today, I'd love for you to make just just a small indication and lift your hand. Go ahead and do it right now. Just lift your hand up and say, yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. Yes, I see you and you and you and you. Holy, holy Lord. Thank you. You could put your hands down. Oh, I see you in the back. Yes, hallelujah. Church, I want to pray this prayer together as a family, if we would. No one praying alone today. This is a family event. Now we're, you're coming into a family now. You're coming into the family of faith. So if you would, just pray this prayer with me. And let's pray it out loud in faith. Let's be bold if it's your heart. Let's pray it out loud. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. 
I give you my life. Thank you for forgiving me from all my sins. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.